Hello dear young friends, let us start the poem Indian Weavers which is unit 2.2 in your Yuvak Bharti English book of standard 12. Before appreciating the poem, I deem it right to introduce her to you. Sarojini Naidu ni Chattopadhyay, ni means before marriage, she was Chattopadhyay. Sarojini Naidu ni Chattopadhyay who took birth on 13th of February 1879 was an Indian political activist, poet a proponent of civil rights, women emancipation and anti-imperialistic ideas. She was an important figure in Indian independence movement. Her work as a poet earned her the subriquet Nightingale of India, Bharat Kokila. Following her time in England where she worked as a suffragist that is who advocates for extending voting rights along with property rights etc to women, she became a part of Indian nationalist movement and became a follower of Mahatma Gandhi. She was appointed the President of Indian National Congress in 1925 and later became the Governor of the United Provinces in 1947, becoming the first woman to hold the office of Governor in the Dominion of India. Dear students, let's watch this video. I found it in YouTube. It is in Hindi, describing Bharat Kokila's life history. Please watch. Shram karte hai hum ki samundar ho tumhari jagriti ka shad. Ho chuka jagran. Aap dekho nikla din kitna ujwal. भारत कोकिला सरोजनी नायडू ने कुछ ऐसे शब्दों से आजाद भारत को सलाम किया था आजादी की जंग में झांसी की रानी की तरह लड़ने वाली सरोजनी नायडू एक कवियत्री राजनयिक और महिला हक की पैरोकार रही सरोजनी नायडू का जन्म 13 फरवरी अठारह को हैदराबाद में हुआ था अपने कवि भाई हरेंद्रनाथ चट्टोपाध्याय की तरह सरोजनी को भी अपने माता पिता से कविता सृजन की प्रतिभा मिली अठारह में उच्च शिक्षा प्राप्त करने के लिए वे इंग्लैंड गईं और पढ़ाई के साथ साथ कविताएं भी लिखती रहीं। सरोजनी नायडू की कविता संग्रह बर्ड ऑफ टाइम और ब्रोकन विंग ने उन्हें एक सुप्रसिद्ध कवियत्री बना दिया अठारह में सरोजनी नायडू डॉक्टर गोविंद राजुलू नायडू की जीवन संगनी बनी 1914 में इंग्लैंड में वे पहली बार गांधी जी से मिली और उनके विचारों से प्रभावित होकर देश के लिए समर्पित हो गई एक कुशल सेनापति की तरह सरोजनी नायडू ने कई राष्ट्रीय आंदोलनों का नेतृत्व किया और जेल भी गई 1919 में रॉलेट अधिनियम के खिलाफ सरोजनी संगठित असहयोग आंदोलन में शामिल हो गयी उन्नीस सौ में ही उन्हें इंग्लैंड में होम रूल लीग के राजदूत के रूप में नियुक्त किया गया था 1924 में वे पूर्वी अफ्रीकी भारतीय कांग्रेस की प्रतिनिधि भी बनी सरोजनी नायडू 1925 में कानपुर में हुए कांग्रेस अधिवेशन में पार्टी की पहली महिला अध्यक्ष बनी 1928 को जब वे अमेरिका गए तो ओजस्वी भाषण में नारी शक्ति का उद्घोष किया Could have chosen a woman to be its representative and ambassador. But if you read and write the whole history of Indian civilization, you will realize that woman has been the very pivot of its culture. उन्नीस सौ इकतीस में इंग्लैंड में आयोजित दूसरे गोल में शिखर सम्मेलन में वे गांधी जी के साथ शामिल हुए उन्नीस में उन्हें भारत छोड़ो आंदोलन में शामिल होने के कारण महात्मा गांधी के साथ गिरफ्तार किया गया था उन्नीस में उन्हें भारत का प्रतिनिधि बनाकर दक्षिण अफ्रीका भेजा गया सरोजनी नायडू आजाद भारत के संविधान के ड्राफ्ट कमेटी में शामिल रहे उन्नीस में भारत की आजादी के बाद वे उत्तर प्रदेश की पहली राज्यपाल बनी मार्च उन्नीस को अपने कार्यकाल में काम करते हुए उनको दिल का दौरा पड़ा और उनकी मृत्यु हो गई मौत से पहले उन्होंने मुस्कुराते हुए कहा था मैं आशा करती हूँ कि ये मेरी आखिरी नींद नहीं है लेकिन नियति को कुछ और ही मंजूर था गोमती नदी के तट पर भारत कोकिला सरोजनी नायडू का अंतिम संस्कार किया गया यहाँ रोशनी बहुत तेज है खामोश कर दो गीत गाते गाते थक चुके मेरे अधरों को so dear students her poetry is a gift to mankind covering children as well as adults with patriotism romance social issues and life itself as the major themes
published in the year 1912 in the bazaars of Hyderabad is one of her most popular poems. The ashes of Sarojini Naidu were kept at Golden Threshold, Hyderabad before immersion. Golden Threshold is in the University of Hyderabad. Sarojini Naidu was awarded the Kaisare Hind Medal by the British government for her work during the plague epidemic in India, but later she returned it in her protest against the April 1919 Jallianwala Bagh massacre. For her work in the field of poetry writing, she was given the title Nightingale of India, Bharat Kokila. In 2014, Google India commemorated her 135th birth anniversary with a Google Doodle. She was listed among 150 leading women list by University of London to mark the 150 years since women gained access to higher education in the United Kingdom in 2018. Asteroid 5647 Sarojini Naidu, discovered by Eleanor Helen, an American astronomer at Paloma Observatory located in San Diego, California, was named in her memory. Indian Weavers was written in the year 1971. It is a short poem of three stanzas of four lines each, hence twelve-line poem designed in A A B B rhyme scheme. Literary devices like metaphor, simile, imagery, and apostrophe are used to create a snowballing poetic effect. I call the entire poem an epigram, which means very short and pithy statement while conveying the life message. And that is pehla bachpan, dusra jawani, aur akhir mein budhapa, jise hum maut ka gehra dost bhi kehte hain, aur jo insaan ko dhire dhire apni sharan mein, agosh mein le leti hai. So there are three stanzas. Let us read the poem. The poem. Weavers weaving at break of day, why do you weave a garment so gay? Blue as the wing of a halcyon wild, we weave the ropes of a newborn child. Weavers weaving at fall of night, why do you weave a garment so bright? Like the plumes of a peacock, purple and green, we weave the marriage veils of a queen. Weavers weaving solemn and still, what do you weave in the moonlit chill? White as a feather and white as a cloud, we weave a dead man's funeral shroud. Hence. The first stanza is about childhood, symbolized by blue color of halcyon, I mean kingfisher, or another mythical bird which is bright, optimistic, and charming. The word used is gay. The second is about adulthood or youth, symbolized by purple or green color of the plumes of a peacock. The third is white, no color. I mean the red, blue, and green, the primary colors of life mixed in equal proportions, give us a color which is white or gray. White means death. Funerals happen in white. Burial cloth is white. Condolence givers come in white. The white cloud in the moonlit night floats fast to signify an end of a life. In the first stanza, the poet asks the weavers why they are weaving clothes early in the morning, which seem to be quite beautiful and charming. I mean, gay. The clothes are blue, as the wing of a house in white. The wings are bright blue in color. The poet is curious to know about them. The Indian weavers reply, "We weave the robes of a newborn child." In this stanza, the first stage of human life that is morning is described. This stage is full of happiness, freshness, hope, and beauty. There is no sorrow in this stage. I mean, you. In the second stanza, the poet again meets the Indian weavers. This time during the dusk, a colorful evening, when most of the marriages take place. It symbolizes youth. The poet questions the weavers. Why they weave a garment so bright, like the plumes of a peacock, purple and green? The garment at this time is bright and full of colors, like feathers of a peacock, unlike the previous blue. The weavers reply that they weave the marriage veils of a queen. Thus, referring to the second stage of the life, during this stage, humans are quite active. They love each other, get married to lead a successful life with hum do hamare do. The colors purple and green symbolize sorrow and happiness. Or struggle and ease, or friction and smoothness, mood swings, etc. In adult stage, and these colors or ups and downs of life make the adulthood brighter, more energetic, enjoyable, challenging, and attractive. So is the expression "the plumes of a peacock, purple and green." In the final stanza, the poet finds the weaver still and sorrowful while weaving something weird in the moonlit chill that is in the dead of the night. 
It is a white shroud resembling white feather and as white as a floating cloud in the night. It is lifeless, colorless and mute. Poet asks them, what are they weaving and not why are they weaving? Mind you, in the previous two stanzas, the poet asks why and in the last stanza, she asks what. They reply that they are weaving shroud, kafan, for a dead person. The white feather has come out from the wind. The floating cloud is not fixed. That is, life floats out of a body. We cannot locate him or her in his or her house tomorrow or forever. Thus, the third and the final stage is death. In this way, a colorful life which begins with joy, hope and optimism, travels through challenges, rewards, respectable positions, money and what not, and ends with sorrow and grief. A sweet brook or a river ultimately submits itself to a brackish ocean. This is applicable on each living being on this earth, I mean you as well as I. Thank you.